I'm giving myself one year to turn my game prototype into a fully released game on Steam. If it's successful, I can keep making games and turn this into my career. If not, I may be stuck doing janitorial work for a long time. I know the title of this video seems like clickbait, but janitorial work is what I do now, and it's likely what I'll continue to do if game dev doesn't work out for me. Uh, it's always paid the bills, it has a flexible schedule. Most importantly, it's allowed me the time to learn Unity and Blender and really entertain the idea of becoming a full-time game developer, something that I've dreamed about since I was a kid. As much time as I've spent um, driving around to different jobs, scrubbing toilets and taking out the trash, I've had my earbuds in uh, listening to uh, indie game developers do what I would love to do. Trust me, doing boring work every day uh, really makes you think about what else you could be doing. And uh, it also gets your creativity flowing. Uh, I often found myself daydreaming about something that I wanted to create. And that just kept getting stronger and stronger over time. So one year to make a game. That's enough time, right? I actually started two months ago uh, at the beginning of January, uh, learning Unity and Blender, uh, trying to polish my game into something decent on the eyes, uh, something that I could show to other people. And it's getting there. As you can probably tell, everything that I know about Unity and Blender is literally right here on the screen. It's not much, I know, but it's a start. So now I have 10 months left to finish this game. and. Sometimes that feels like a long time, but I have some constraints. First of all, I'm a solo indie developer working part-time. So far, I've been averaging about 10 hours per week on this project. Uh, sometimes it's five hours, sometimes it's 20 hours, depending on the week. And if I can continue at that rate, I should land at the, at the end of the year at about 500 hours. That breaks down to about three months of full-time, 40 hours a week work. And I think that sounds about right for my first project. I've heard over and over again that, it, that you shouldn't spend very much time on your first project. And I know I'm stretching the math here a bit, but I'm stretching that three months into a year. So that takes me into my second reason. I want to do YouTube at the same time that I develop this game. I've heard time and time again that if no one knows about your game when you launch it, no one's going to play it. So you have to have a marketing strategy. And YouTube is uh, a great place to show off your game and get people interested in it. But YouTube can be a full-time job, uh, 40 hours a week or more to try to grow a, a channel. So I have to be strategic about my recording and editing and posting process so that it doesn't take all of the time that I have to uh, develop my game. So like many other uh, beginning YouTube channels, uh, this channel will be a bit of an experiment. Along with doing devlogs of my game, I'll be posting other types of content as well. From what I've seen on YouTube, uh, the people who watch devlogs are other indie developers. Uh, devlogs entertain us, they teach us, they encourage us to keep going, and um, they're great to watch. I love watching devlogs, but oftentimes we're not 100% interested in playing the game itself. We're more interested in that journey that the indie developer is on. When it comes to converting a huge group of indie developers that are following your game into wish lists, um, devlogs tend to fall short. Unlike many other indie game developers on YouTube, I won't be posting tutorials or how-to videos. Uh, so many other YouTubers can do that so much better than I can. Uh, and the quality of their videos is so good that it would take me forever to make those videos. Uh, their videos are so good that I learned everything that I know about game development from them. So along with making devlogs, I'll also be posting content that um, hopefully will attract the attention of people who like the genre of games that I would like to make, and that is simulation games, or simulators. Um, I haven't really figured out the difference between those two terms, um, maybe you can tell me. But anyway, this, this genre, simulation, uh, is, is a huge genre and it includes things like automation games, city builder games, um, management games, tycoons, farming games. That's the genre of games that I would like to make, and that's what I'm making right now. Uh, how I would define my game is an ecosystem evolution simulator, uh, specifically uh, focused around fish. Uh, why fish? 
Well, fish are very easy to animate compared to any other animal that I can imagine. There's a huge variety of fish of all different colors and sizes and shapes, and they live in many different types of ecosystems. So I thought they were perfect for the game idea that I have. The game is called Please Feed the Fish. As the player, you simply feed the fish and the rest is simulation magic. Since I'm focused on making simulation games, my strategy for YouTube will be to attract the attention of people who like this genre of game and hopefully will like my game also. And what better way to do that than to showcase other simulation games here on the channel? I'll keep you updated with upcoming uh, AAA and indie simulation games. I'll make you aware of free games on Steam and demos that are available now. Most of the simulation games that I played that inspired me to create this type of game, I played back in the 90s and early 2000s. So if I can get my hands on them again, I'd love to share some of the, my favorites uh, from back then. That being said, I'm kind of behind the times when it comes to modern simulation games. So I'll also be playing uh, some of the most popular simulation games uh, for the first time here on the channel. Getting back to the game that I'm making, the fish swim in a pond and the player feeds them. To start, the player has two choices, meat or plant, and these foods can be dropped into the pond. The fish will swim toward the food and eat it. And here's where the game gets interesting. At least, I hope it's interesting. As you feed the fish, they grow and change. They'll change in different ways depending on what you feed them. The minnow, the starting fish, has three ways that it could evolve. Feed it all meat, all plant, or a mixture of both for three different branches. The feeding process becomes more complicated as the game progresses. Larger fish will need to eat smaller fish, so a ecosystem management will come into play later on. You'll need to make sure that there are enough smaller fish to keep those larger fish alive. Different environments will open up allowing fish to be moved around and fed new types of food. What you're seeing now is everything that the game is so far, everything that I've done in the last two months. This is the pond level, the beginning level, and there are five more environments planned. A big part of the focus for the plan of this game was to keep the scope small, um, make it something that I could finish in a reasonable amount of time. So the game doesn't have very many mechanics. Feeding the fish and moving them around is really the only thing that the player can do. The rest of the game is all simulated. Some things that I haven't started on are things like UI and camera motion. Um, but besides that, the rest of the development process will just be building out uh, the rest of the levels and um, all the models for the fish. Right now, it feels like a small enough scope for me to finish within the next 10 months. Of course, I have no experience with making games, so maybe it'll take a lot longer. I have no specific layout for each month. It feels like a waste of time to um, try to guess how long things will take. I'll just play it by ear. And if if it doesn't seem like uh, the game is going to be done by the end of the year, I'll, I'll cut things out and I'll just try to get it done. I'll just focus on getting it done by the end of the year. So if this is a game that you think you'd like to play, um, please let me know in the comments. Um, feedback is welcome. Anything that you would hope to see from a game like this, uh, would be very valuable information for me. I'm curious to know what you think of the graphics. Do you, for a game like this, for a semi-realistic uh, ecosystem evolution simulator, do the graphics need to be amazing? Or can they be more on the cartoony side? What I've come up with so far is good enough for me right now. But I'd love to know if you are a, a player of this type of game, uh, these simulation games, how important are graphics to you? In the next dev vlog, I'll catch you up on everything that I've done so far in the last two months how I turned this into this. And I'll give you a deeper dive into some of the features that the game has now and will have in the future. If you'd like to know right when that comes out, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.